Pitmas here. I'm here with Vato. And let me show you some old school uh, Kaji Kempo hammer blows. I love hammer blows. It brings back the old days. I think some are so effective and they, they, they're much more effective than a fist. Some of them. To me, some of them aren't. <laughs> some of them just, to me, they're a waste and they look good. You know, the Kaji Kempo guys used to use them. I don't, I don't believe them at all some of them, but some of them I think are very effective. Let, let me show you the main reason they're effective. Let me, let me tell you why. Try to go outside on some concrete. Just get a brick. Just get a brick and hit it really hard. Okay? Now punch it really hard. You can tell your knuckles are much more, they're not, they're not fragile, but they're not as solid as the hammer fist. Okay? So the main thing that a hammer fist has over knuckles is it is much more, um, it's much more solid, okay, and it hurts less. But it's not as, it's not as versatile as fists. In other words, if I'm fighting a guy and he's over here, like if I just missed a hook or something and he's here, that's to me a perfect uh, side hammer blow. Like if I miss a hook, come back that way. That's, a, that's what a hammer blows for. I don't believe in snapping it like I learned. I think you should just turn your head, bend your arm a little bit, because you never want to jam someone's head when your arm is straight, because then you dislocate your elbow. You don't want to dislocate your elbow in a fight. It happens. It, it does happen. I've seen it happen at least five times. So you keep your arm slightly bent. You're aiming for this part of the hand right here, guys. This is the hammer fist. This, this, uh, this muscle right here, on the side of the hand, that's called the hammer fist. So if I miss a hook, bang, I come back with a hammer fist, right? Say I'm coming to this guy, and this guy's coming at me, boom, then I'll throw a side hammer fist, okay? Now, a downward hammer fist, like if someone's, if I have someone in a position, right, and I, wanna, I don't wanna punch him, I can hammer fist the back of his head or the back of his neck. Right? So that would be a downward hammer fist. Bing! Right to the head as hard as I could, right to the back of the neck as hard as I could. Or if I was on the ground with him, which we're not going to go on the ground right now, but imagine if I mounted him and I go to punch him and he moves his head, I'm going to break my hand on the concrete. People have broken their hands on the mat. The counter. People break their hand. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, but I've seen guys break their hand on the mat. Imagine what's going to happen to your hand in, on the concrete. So that's a great place for hammer blows. When you're on top of someone in, in, a hammer, in, in a mount position. Or even if you're on the bottom in, a, in somebody's guard, hammer fisting is a great way. Elbows if they're closer, or punching, but hammer fisting is also good there. So the downward hammer blow comes downward, right? The side hammer blow is on the side. I miss the left hook, I throw a side hammer blow. Downward hammer blow is if someone's beneath you, downward hammer blow. Side hammer blow is if you miss a hook or somebody's on the side of you. Okay, these are inward hammer blows. I don't believe inward hammer blows are effective at all, right? And, and when I was training, they would actually like throw a hand and then throw an inward hammer blow to the side of the neck. I think that's very ineffective. I would never use that. If I'm gonna do an in, inside hammer blow, I would just throw a hook. It's like a no-brainer. Why would you ever throw this when you don't, you, the way you turn your shoulder and you can't use your hip as much, it's just in an awkward position. The hook is much more effective. But the next shot is, uh, is deadly, right? Yeah. You see crowd with chops? Yeah, this isn't they a put crowd. Him, they put them out, right? Yeah, they, they'll say hit him in the neck, but you can't really aim for the neck in a street fight. You're aiming for the chin. Oh. So, the, in, the you just don't get enough power here, okay? Now there's the outward hammer blow like this. So people actually teach you to throw this strike. You might hit someone, but there's no power. It's like a spring. If I was gonna hit someone with this, I'd rather just hit them with this or with this. I wouldn't waste my time with this, unless, okay, unless I had a pointed weapon, like, a tactical pen. Then if somebody was in, I was, you know, somebody was talking to me or attacking me and this all I had, then I would come straight out this way. 
right? I might, I don't think I'd ever come this way, but I'd come this way a lot, right? I'd also put in my hands a punch with it, but I'd do side with it, side hammer blow, and if somebody's right in front of me, I, I would hit them in the face with that, okay? But an outward hammer blow, I just wouldn't use, and I learned that in our day. The other one that I learned was a circular hammer blow to the groin. I don't know, if I was like dancing around someone, I might try that, but I never have and I probably never would. So I, I, it's not in my curriculum at all in Hawaiian Kempo, the circular hammer blow. So I don't use the inward hammer blow and I don't use the outward hammer blow. I'll use the side hammer blow and the downward hammer blow. So those are my two hammer blows that I've kept in my curriculum from Kaja Kempo to Hawaiian Kempo. I feel those two hammer blows are still effective in the street or in the cage. All right guys, thanks for coming. Please comment, please share. And remember, a hammer blow could save your life if you have a tactical pen. <laughs>